Welcome back. So happy you're going to practice with me again today. I'm Susie Shock. Um, as you can see, I'm in my Jolly Green Giant pants today because I wanted to take this practice to honor our beautiful Mother Earth, Mama Gaia. Um, there's so much going on on our planet and I feel as if we can do something through our meditation, through our vibration, and also um, we can support organizations that are supporting the Earth. Um, so, to stand back and do nothing I think is irresponsible and I'm not here to preach, I'm here to um, just inspire people to take some sort of action because if we all do something small, um, again, we can make a difference. So, let's just take a moment, get ourselves grounded to this beautiful earth. Ah, slow down your breathing, take a long inhale. Let it spiral down your spine and connect your divinity, your divine human body to this beautiful divine earth. So you're inhaling as if this breath of life is coming in through the crown of the head. It's spiraling down the spine. It's moving into the earth and visualize it actually growing roots into the earth. And every single breath, just increase it a little bit longer. Pausing at the top of the inhale because every breath is divine light in, divine light out. So think of your body as a vessel. You're holding a container for that light. And you want to hold it in there as long as it will allow. And then just passively release it out to the world. couple more breaths just like that and then I would love to do a couple ohms um, and if you think of the primordial sound of ohm the universal sound of ohm what it looks like as a healer when I'm doing my uh, meditations it's a vibration of pure unconditional love that moves through every living thing whether it be human animal plant tree water um, and you're breathing the vibration of unconditional love through and it's moving into the earth and it vibrates all the way into the center of the earth and it just circulates around and what you receive back is that vibration of the Aum and you get to receive it in through the feet, up through the legs, back into the body again and it's just this beautiful giving and receiving. So let's take one glorious breath in, and I hope that wherever you're at, that you will do a nice, loud ohm. Um, not a Minnesota ohm where I'm from that's like, mm, but a really loud, I can feel the vibration of pure love moving through me. Exhale the air from your lungs. Deep breath in. Let's do two more. See how I'm calling the critters in? Oh. <laughs> My critter's biting me. <laughs> One more. Oh. This is just really interesting if you had your eyes open. This like little pink has attached herself to my arm. Okay. <laughs> Let's move into our practice. Let's find child's pose. Not in a painful way, just as in a, like, I'm here kind of way. We'll see what she does now. All right, sitting back in your child's pose. Knees to the outside edges of the mat and big toes to touch and just rocking yourself side to side, just cradling yourself in Mama Earth, Mama Gaia. Breathing in and breathing out. <sighs> All is well, right? No matter what's going on in the earth, we can center ourselves 
in a space that all is well and we can vibrate that all is well out and allow it to return. And the more of us that can hold a higher vibration, consider what that would feel like when everybody's got a vibration of being well and being joyful, how that can shift the trajectory of this planet and of our life here. All right, let's take three more breaths, long and even. Shifting into Ujjayi Pranayama. In through the nose, out through the nose, using your nose and your sinuses as a filter. One more. All right, pause in stillness. Palms facing down onto the mat, fingers spread out evenly. Let's pull up into tabletop. Moving right into your cat spine. And then take a good breath into your cow. Exhale into cat. Inhale. Beautiful breath of life. And as you're breathing very slowly in your Ujjayi Pranayama, just feel your body slowly letting down, kind of waking up to all of its potential. Feel free if you want to wag your tail a little bit, side to side. Lift the left hand nice and high. Circle it around a couple of times, the whole arm, and then maybe switching directions and threading the needle. Reach it high and then bring it through shoulder ground. I like to kickstand my leg and just move into a full on twist here by taking that half bind with my upper arm. Gentle release. I like to keep the leg extended and then reaching up and maybe sit back just a little bit. It's a really lovely kind of soft inner thigh stretch. So if you can't see my leg, it's extended out and I'm just easing back. Good, and then bringing knees back underneath the hips Swaying the hips a little bit side to side, loosening things up, and let's do the other side. Right hand reaches high, circling the arm around a couple of times, both directions. Good, reaching high, and then sweep it through, thread the needle. And again, I like to extend the leg, setting myself up, reaching high to the sky, and then taking a little half bind. Just slowly waking up the spine with this little twist. Good, a couple more breaths. And then on. 
unravel your little self. Uh, reaching it high and then again I like to just sit back a little. Nice. Just easy opening to the inner thigh. Bring the knees back under the hips, sway the hips a little bit side to side. And let's ground our hands with pointer fingers facing the front of the room. The rest of the fingers spread out evenly, stepping into your plank. And I like to just march it out a little bit. We shall see how these jolly green giant pants do in an actual flow <laughs> class. First time wearing them. All right, lifting hips high. Finding downward facing dog. Rolling up onto all ten toes, finding your way back into plank. Lifting high into downward facing dog. Easing forward into plank. Good, lifting high, downward facing dog. Moving forward, let's take our first chaturanga. You could be on knees if you prefer. You could lower all the way to the mat if you prefer. Up dog or cobra and then back into downward facing dog. Good. Inhaling right leg high and bend the knee, open the hip. Let it circle around a little. Maybe in both directions. Squaring it off. Easing into runner's lunge. Good. Let's just lift and lower into runner's lunge a little bit. Do whatever feels right to you. I like to lift and then pull back a little bit. Always moving with my breath. Good. Coming forward, dropping to the bottom knee. Just take a pause there. Maybe rock it out a little bit. I'm going to take a little twist. Maybe grab the back foot. Couple more breaths here. And then gentle release, ground the hands. Lifting the back leg, front foot meets the back. Inhale. <laughs> Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhaling, left leg. Bending the knee, open the hip, circle it around, finding your way, squaring it off, runner's lunge, foot comes to the outside of the hand. And I like to come to fists as well, it just gives my wrists a little bit of a break as I'm lifting and lowering. I also really enjoy closing my eyes through most of my practice. So if that serves you at all, go right ahead and really feel into your body how it's communicating to you. Nice. All right, let's drop down to the bottom knee. You could rock along the knee if you'd like. You can I like to take just a little twist. Just feeling into it to begin with. Each side's going to feel a little bit different. Maybe grabbing the back foot. And then release. Easing back into center, grounding hands. Lifting the back knee. Front foot meets the back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Upward facing dog or cobra. Beautiful downward facing dog. Nice. I like to just alternate pressing heels down and lifting sitting bones, reaching them back to where the wall and the ceiling meet so my spine gets as long as it can. Feel free if it's better to bend the knees. Good. 
Again, roll up onto all ten toes. Really stretch the arches of the feet. Bend the knees, belly to thighs. And in your own time, top of the mat, feet are hip distance or wider for right back pose. Get some nice length to the spine. Roll the weight forward into the balls of the feet and then just surrender into that fold. I encourage you to bend your knees to begin with. Such a lovely way to give the spine some goodness and let it stretch and lengthen and make this posture all about the spine. Finding space between each vertebrae. I am almost 5'2", and I cannot afford to lose even an eighth of an inch to my height, so I love anything that can lengthen my spine and keep me at least feeling tall. Actually, I do feel pretty tall. I don't feel small. All right. Toe-heeling the feet back if they're not already hip distance. Let's find a halfway lift and a fold. Ground the feet. Root them down into the earth and then reverse your swan dive. Coming all the way up into Tadasana Mountain Pose and bring the hands to heart center. Let's take a moment just to root down. All right, so the four corners of the feet are spread out evenly. Think of yourself just standing in the dirt, rooting the feet down. All right, let's breathe from the crown of the head again, as if that beautiful light life force is moving through the spine, down through the legs, into the earth. And through every toe, you're growing roots, and through the heel, you're growing roots. All right, and you're just grounding yourself, committing yourself in your beautiful human body to this planet. And before we move into Sunamaskar A, sending love or an offering to the earth, maybe telling Mama Gaia all is well. I promise we will take care of you. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, swan dive forward, fold. Inhale, open, halfway lift. Exhale, ground the hands, chaturanga. Remember, you could come to knees to take chaturanga. Up dog or cobra. Downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Another one just like that. Fill your lungs. Empty the lungs. Inhale, prepare to move. Exhale, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, Tadasana, mountain pose. Exhale, baby back bend. Inhale, palms to touch. Honoring the earth as you bring hands through heart center, forward fold. Inhale, open, halfway lift. Exhale, ground the hands, step back, chaturanga. Inhale, finds upward facing dog or cobra. Exhale, ease yourself, surrender into downward facing dog. Long breath in, long breath out. Another one just like that, long breath in, easing it out. Inhaling, preparing to move. Exhale, top of the mat, re-ground your feet. Open halfway, surrender and fold. Sweep it high to the sky, steeple grip, side body bend to the right. Inhaling back to center, side body bend to the left. Inhaling back to the center, bring the hands behind you. Interlace steeple grip or grab opposite elbow or a strap. Lifting the shoulders up, back, and down. Slowly take that little baby back bend. Coming back up to center, bend the knees, take a forward fold, chest expansion. 
Make this again more about the spine lengthening than the hamstrings. Right, so nice bend in the knees, belly is connected right to the thighs, really safe way for your fold. No stress or strain. Let the crown of the head drop to the mat. Release the hands down. Open halfway lift. Ground the hands, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. And exhale, downward facing dog. Beautiful thing. Let's inhale right leg high. And bend the knee, open the hip. Good, and square it off. Bring your right knee to right tricep. Inhale, bring it high. Exhale, right knee, left tricep. Inhale, bring it high. Knee comes to the nose, carving out the belly, finding your low lunge. Sleeping up to crescent lunge. Pause and just breathe into your crescent lunge. Grounding yourself again through the feet. Run the energy of the earth up through the legs into the base of the spine. Pulling up of the pelvic floor, pulling in through that Uddiyana Bandha, lifting up, reaching to the sky. Stability. Good, inhale, let's open little baby back bend. Exhale, let's find airplane arms. Inhale, open to your warrior two. Good, pause and hold your warrior two. Bring the palms to the sky. Bring the palms back down to the mat. Good, inhale, reverse your warrior. And exhale, take it back down to the mat, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Good, inhale, left leg. Exhale, bend the knee, open the hip. Inhale, square it off. Left knee, left tricep. Inhale, bring it nice and high. Left knee, right tricep. Inhale, high. Knee to nose. Low lunge. Stabilize, right? Pull everything into the midline, stack the spine. Lift it up, crescent lunge. Beautiful, same thing, right down through the feet. Bring the energy back up into the spine, reaching up to the sky. All is well, right? Inhale, open baby back bend. Exhale, find your airplane arms. Inhale, open warrior two. Bring the palms to the sky. Back down to the mat. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, take it down. Hands to the mat. Front foot meets the back. Chaturanga. Find your flow. Find your rhythm. Up dog. Downward facing dog. Our beautiful earth has such a rhythm to it. Can you find and flow with the rhythm of the earth, the vibration of the earth? Rolling up onto ten toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs. Bring it to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, and exhale, fold forward. Let's do that again. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold forward. One more time. Inhale, halfway lift, exhale, fold forward. Sit back in your chair. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Good, weight in the heels. Let's just do a little pulsing, right? Just a little, little pulsing. Think of the glutes firing as you're lifting and lowering. Hands can be at heart center. Hands can be up to the sky. Good, close the eyes. Just feel the rhythm of your movement, connecting to the rhythm of your breath, connecting to the rhythm of the earth. Pulsing four and three. And two, and one. Sit back in your chair again. Just breathe. Four, 
three, two, inhale, one, forward fold, exhale, inhale, halfway lift, exhale, ground the hands, Chaturanga Dandasana, inhale, upward facing dog, Exhale, downward facing dog. Good, inhale, right leg high. Bend the knee, open the hip. Stay as you are, flip your beautiful dog. Woo, I'm slipping on this slippery floor. <sighs> Ground down again, right? All right, let's flip it back. Extend the leg high. Right knee comes to right tricep. Pause and hold or take a little push-up. Good, lifting up, bring it high. Right knee comes to the left tricep. Pause and hold or take a push-up. Bring it high. Knee to nose. Low lunge. Stabilize. Crescent lunge. Land and ground, like we're going to lift up on the inhale and then just rip down on the exhale. Do it again. Inhale, lifting up and exhale, rip down. Two more. Inhale, lift. Exhale, rip down. One more. Lift. Exhale, rip down. Staying as you are with bent knees. Inhale, arms up and overhead. Take that baby back bend. Exhale into airplane arms. Shifting the weight into the right foot. Launch off into your airplane pose. Opening the chest. Good, nice and strong. Heart is open. It's a beautiful thing. All right, from here, slowly lifting the torso. Leg does not go, her foot does not ground. Let's move right into eagle pose. Challenging your balance right from the get-go. How grounded are you today? How much in your body are you today? No judgment, just witness. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let's reverse that now. Elbows come down to the knees. Fingertips reach forward, broaden the back. Uncross the legs, extend it long. Open up the heart space again. Step back into your crescent lunge. Open to warrior two. Good, grounding down, rooting down through the feet. Let's lift up again and then lower. Lifting up and lowering down. Two more, lift, and lower, one more. Lift it up, and lower it down. Palms to the sky, palms to the floor. Inhale, reverse your warrior, this time exhale, extended side angle. Long, even breath in, beautiful breath out. One more, just like that. Good, we're gonna change it up just a little bit. Squaring hips off to the front of the mat, left hand will ground. Deep breath in as you lengthen the spine, exhale, rotate. Revolve extended side angle. If this doesn't feel good on the back knee, just pivot onto the ball of the back foot. Breathing in, breathing out. One more. Good, let's slowly come back to extended side angle. Straightening the front leg on the inhale, Trikonasana, triangle pose and pause and just breathe into this. Give that front thigh a little bit of a rest. Finding your stability through the pelvis, right? Pulling up of the pelvic floor, the Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha, that root lock, that, or that core lock, that internal hug and then expressing it down through the legs, rooting down into the earth. Nice, 
hold here. Long, even breath. Beautiful. Reverse your triangle. Slowly find star. Glorious star. And then sink down into goddess. Externally rotate the thighs, knees tracking out towards the pinky toe and lifting and lowering here. One more. Hands to heart center. Two more breaths. One more. Let's straighten the legs, reach up, bringing the feet parallel, spine dive into prasarita. Shift the hips as you need to, just to get yourself comfortable in prasarita. And let's take a little twist here as well. So right hand's gonna come over towards the left. Maybe it's grabbing the toes. It could be staying center. And the left hand reaches to the sky. You decide how it feels good to you. Bring it back to center. Switch sides. Hand could plant in the center. It could come all the way over to the opposite foot. Good. Bring it back to the center. Find a nice halfway lift and then moving into low lunge to the top of your mat. Grounding down to the back knee. Inhale, sweeps arms up and overhead. And exhale, taking another little baby back bend. Nice little stretch. Hands come up and overhead and back to heart center. Inhale, exhale, take a gentle twist. Could be prayer hands if you'd like. Could be hand to knee. One hand could be resting on the mat. Lots of ways to do it. Feel free if you want to grab your back foot again. Nice, and bring it back to the center. Grounding hands, front foot meets the back. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Breathing in. And breathing out, reground yourself. Commit yourself to the earth. Run the energy through the hands. On the inhale, up through the arms, the spine, the hips, and return it back down to the earth on the exhale. Pull it back up through the hands, the arms, the spine, the hips. Exhale, return it back down to the earth. Left leg will lift high. Bend the knee, open the hip. Stay as you are or flip your dog. Good, flip it back. Extending left leg high. Left knee, left tricep. Stay as you are or a little push up. Good, bring it high again. Left knee, right tricep, stay as you are or a little push up. Good, bring it nice and high. Knee comes to the nose, low lunge. Grounding yourself, stabilizing, and sweep it up into crescent lunge. Good, inhale, rise, and exhale, lower. Inhale, rise, exhale, lower. Two more. One more. Stay with that knee, lifting arms up and overhead. Open to that beautiful baby back bend. Finding airplane arms, shifting the weight forward. Grounding left foot, lunge off into airplane pose. This could be your airplane with toes touching. 
You can just work on balance by slowly lifting the leg and lowering the torso. Notice how things feel. I want torso in line with the leg though. One long line from the crown of the head out through the toes. Beautiful. All right, let's slowly come up. That leg is going to be lifted, moving into eagle. Right elbow under, right knee over. Take your time finding it. Kickstand the toes if you'd like. Grab opposite shoulder if you'd rather. And gentle releases, we bring elbows down to the knees. Fingertips are going to reach forward as we broaden the back. Uncross the legs, airplane legs, eagle arms. Full airplane pose, hallelujah. Step it back into crescent lunge. And then open to warrior two. And I'm just going to switch sides so I'm facing you. Beautiful, inhale, let's lift. Exhale, lower down. Good. Inhale, lift. Exhale, ease down. Feel yourself ground. Inhale, rise. Easing back down. One more time. Rise. And lower. Beautiful. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, extended side angle. Ooh. I need some alterations. <laughs> in my green pants. <sighs> breathing in. Breathing out. All right, slowly square the hips off to the center. Revolved extended side angle. So whether the forearm is on the thigh and you're reaching out with the left hand or, for, or hand is down to the mat, and then slowly get length of the spine, bring the belly through, shoulders gaze. Remember, if it doesn't feel good on the back foot, go to the ball of the back foot. If it doesn't feel good on the back knee, ball of the back foot. Couple more breaths, just as you are. Nice, coming back into extended side angle. Straightening the front leg, finding Trikonasana Triangle Pose. Doesn't that feel delicious? Good. Long, even breath in. Long, even breath out. Good. Inhale, come into star. And exhale, move into goddess. Good. Come to rise, squeezing the glutes. Exhale, anchor down, knees towards the pinky toes. Come and rise. And lower down. Rise. And lower down and pause. Just breathe. Beautiful goddess. If you want an added challenge, you can certainly lift the heels. to rise. Bringing feet parallel, swan dive and fold. Just tented fingers to begin with. Kind of ease into your prasarita. Some of you may want to take crow pose right now or some of you may want to do an inversion. And I'll walk you through tripod headstand. Now my rule is always you may not kick up into your headstands, right? using that beautiful strength of the upper body and the core to lift yourself. You could even do tripod or take prasarita, take a nice long forward fold. If you're going to go into tripod, it's like an equilateral triangle between the hands and the head, equal distance, and a nice 90 degree bend of the elbows. So I'll do that sideways as well so you can see what I'm doing on my very slippery floor. Good. So I'm getting a 90 degree bend of the elbows 
and I'm stacking hips right over my shoulders and then I'm lifting and in tripod I really prefer straddle but you can certainly bring the legs together and the reason being is it distributes the weight a little bit more with legs out than legs right up over the head. Do it however you'd like. You can also take tripod and just have the knees attached to the triceps and not lift up. Just a great way to practice your inversions. All right, let's slowly land our inversions. And I'm gonna come back to the center and everyone, in prasarita, bring your hands to your hips and slowly come to rise. Actually go back down and then let's find a little lunge to the top of your mat. Inhaling, arms up and overhead. Beautiful expression. Little baby back bend if you'd like. And then Regrounding hands, we'll take a little twist. So it could be hand to the inside arch, twist. It could be prayer hands. Find what works for you. Maybe grabbing onto the back foot. Good, and let's all come back to center. Grounding hands again, front foot meets the back, and take your chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Long, even breath in, and beautiful breath out. Good, inhale, shift into high plank. Exhale, lower all the way down to the mat. Thumbs brushing the low ribs. Setting up for cobra. Tops of the feet press down. Kneecaps are pulling up. Quadriceps are strong. Glutes are strong. So knees are actually off the mat. All right, here we go. On the inhale, long spine reaching out through the crown of the head, lifting head, neck, and shoulders. Shoulders melt down the spine. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more. And then lower, right cheek to the mat, just surrender. <sighs> Let everything melt and feel beautiful. Two comes back to the center, options. Salabhasana or locust, where you're lifting legs and upper body, or if you want to take upward facing bow. Good, so I'm, I like to hook my hands. And on the inhale, just this glorious lift, lifting and opening into the front body. Perfect. Keep going, keep going, keep going. And then surrender down. Left cheek to the mat, all is well. Life is good. Chin comes center, pull back, find a child's pose. You can stay as you are in traditional child's pose, or you can reach back for your heels and then slowly lift into rabbit. So in rabbit pose, you're holding the heels, you're lifting from resting on the forehead to resting on the very top of the head. So I'm looking right between my knees. I'm not crunching the cervical spine, I'm actually getting it longer. And then everyone come to rest. Child's pose. Let's slowly come to sit on the heels. Stand on the knees. Ustrasana camel. So think of Tadasana. We're grounding down through the knees. And we're going to take a beautiful shoulder shrug, opening up the heart space, grounding hands on the low lumbar. 
You can be on the tops of the feet, or if it feels more stable to curl the toes under, that feels better on my knees. I'm gonna lift up and then open through the chest, staying as you are, or reaching for the heels. And gentle release, settling back into child's pose. Let everything melt down, arms to your side. Sweeping hands up and overhead, curling toes under, downward facing dog. All right, let's move into half pigeon. You can take half pigeon, or if you'd rather, take figure four on your back, or any sort of seated variation for your hip openers is beautiful and perfect. Let's start with right leg lifting high, knee comes to the wrist, calf comes to the inside, and then slowly sitting back. All right, and let's open up the front side of the body, creating a little more space before we surrender down into half pigeon. If this feels too deep or if your hips are kittywumpus on the mat, um, just slide a bolster or a pillow. I like to do it under both hips so they're balanced and even. Or you could do a rolled up mat, bolster, blanket, um, just rolled up under both hips. Rather than just anchoring one side, I see when I'm observing in class, it kind of tips you um, maybe too much so. so Something that balances under both. Perfect. Now staying as you are for a couple more breaths. If you'd rather come up and take half pigeon, that's in your practice. Love it or leave it. And then everyone slowly easing out. If you're on your back, just extend feet to the sky, giving the back side of the knees a little stretch. And if you're in half pigeon, find your downward facing dog, pedal it out. And when you're ready, finding the other side. Left knee comes to the left wrist, calf comes to the inside. Lifting up and open, getting a nice front body stretch before you ease down into your pigeon.
And again, staying just as you are for a few more breaths. If you'd like to come up and take King Pigeon, that's in your practice, feel free. Good, and then gentle release. Let's all take our final downward facing dog together. Just pedaling things out, shifting weight, shifting gaze. And then coming down onto knees, crossing the legs and pulling your feet through. Paschimottanasana, extending legs nice and long, peeling all the muscle out so you can feel the sitting bones grounding. Think of roots growing down into the earth again. And then receiving it, lifting up on the inhale and folding on your exhale. So know that knees can be bent as much as you need to. Right, connecting the belly to the thighs, that's what's important here. And just straightening them to your ability. Toes are gonna flex back towards the nose though, right? So we want very active um, top of the legs, quadriceps, so that the hamstrings can kind of let go. slowly releasing. Let's find a reverse plank. So grounding the hands, lifting the hips, opening the heart. Could be reverse table if that feels better. Resting sitting bones back down and coming all the way down to the earth. Heels are coming as close as they can to the sitting bones. Feet are hip distance. Good. Moving into bridge. So on your next inhale, just lifting the tailbone, scooping up the hips. And slowly lifting the torso and shimmying those shoulders underneath. And returning back down to the earth in your own time. Supta Baddha Konasana, or bringing knees into the chest, maybe doing little circles with the knees. Finding what feels the best to you. And then staying as you are, or maybe taking the second set of bridge or full wheel. Lining things up properly, and on that beautiful inhale, take your lift. And then finding your way back down to the mat. Again, knees into the chest. You could windshield wiper or Supta Baddha Konasana. Soles of the feet to touch, hand to heart, hand to belly. Let everything soften, let everything slow down. We're moving into all the goodness now. All of the goodness, all the effort is done. Let's find our ease. Staying just as you are again, maybe you wanna bring knees into the chest, feet to the sky, and do a little pillow under the low lumbar, the sacrum area, and have this nice restorative um, well, you call it legs up the wall, but we don't have a wall right now. You could shift over to the wall though. Um, or you can take plow pose and shoulder stand. So taking your time, easing into your choice. 
When I do plow pose and shoulder stand, I usually do it in that order versus the other way around because I like to allow myself a little time to stretch out my cervical and thoracic spine and just get myself lined up, feeling safe to lift into shoulder stand. So right now you're grounding shoulders and triceps and the back of the head, never the neck. And if you find that connection of the neck to the earth, putting a blanket underneath the shoulders. Good, and lifting up nice and tall into shoulder stand if that's again in your practice. Long, deep breath in, and a nice even breath out. And here comes my hanky. <laughs> Good. All right, and slowly easing back into plow pose, maybe kind of padasana, ear pinning pose. And then rolling yourself all the way down. Happy baby. Perfect. Let's find a final supine twist before our Shavasana. So extending left leg long, right knee comes into the chest, take an inhale and exhale, cross it over the body. Right arm extends out, gazing to those fingertips, knee goes to the left. And knee comes back into the center, give it a nice squeeze. Lower it down, switch sides, left knee comes into the chest, take an inhale and exhale, draw it across the body. Left arm reaches out into a T, gaze into the left fingertips, and right knee comes over. Give a nice little compression to the intestinal tract and a nice little reboot for the spine. Beautiful little massage for the spine, any sort of twist, whether it be gentle, or more intense. Feel free if you'd like to use a prop under the knee as well. That may be helpful. Uh, just a couple more breaths here. And knee comes back into the chest. Good. Have the right knee meet the left. Wrapping forearms around the shins, bring the forehead up to the knees. On the inhale, pressing shins into the forearms. And on the exhale, finding your beautiful final Shavasana. And this is where I am going to leave you off so that you have the opportunity to take a two minute Shavasana or a 20 minute Shavasana. But know that I'm sending you off with love and may you have peace in your thoughts, peace in your words, and peace in your heart and your actions. Have a beautiful Shavasana. Namaste. And thank you so much for joining me today.